Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. I am back here with the amazing Mr. Johnny Kincaid. Uh, again, thank you so much for having us and spending your afternoon uh, answering some questions. You're welcome. So, if you haven't seen it, uh, a couple of months ago, Johnny was kind enough to allow us to film a refretting process that he did with the uh, with Red, my Telecaster, and Blue Mix Strat. Um, today, we're also going to be looking at a really simple setup that you know you guys can do at home because I've got some questions about that that I'm yeah, you know okay. how we do that. But the first thing I wanted to do was just go through a few of these uh, questions that from the first video of the setup. Okay. Um, <laughs> there this was is readers. This viewers, viewers exactly responses. exactly. So that video in two months has had uh, 110,000 views, and over 1,100 of you have commented on that video. Um, generally to say how amazing you are and that the work that you do, I think a lot of people are concerned that the amount of people who are able to do that sort of work is diminishing. I would have thought it was expanding. Okay. Compared to when I started doing this 40 years ago, nobody in this country knew very much about it. Right. And there was a few guitar makers who kind of invented guitar making in this country without any training right just by experimentation so wow no there are you know so it was it, it has grown in this country certainly that's fantastic news that's brilliant you know. um there's a couple of uh, so sped spedding Hoosie watson xlr8 wales and dave lavello the penny drops and a number of guys uh, you said that you can hear Dan wetting himself when Johnny is talking about the super glue going up cracks beautifully. There are many, many uses for it. And this thin stuff goes up cracks beautifully. That was, that, yeah, that was very funny. Kiero Sierra Alpha summed it up uh, for most of us when he said, this is a refretting masterclass. Um, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no, it was amazing. So Steve Blake and Swell Farming, uh, there was a part in the video where you said, this has been refretted once before. And I said, how do you know? Waiting for some magical luthier wisdom <laughs> and insight after 40 years of guitar building. And you said, well, that's what Mick said. Top yes. marks, brilliant. <laughs> yep. Uh, Vincent Tuckwood wanted to know, did Johnny fix Mick's volume pot? I did something to you it. You did, didn't I? yeah. I, I, you what did, did I do? It? Oh, yes, I remember it was going round and round and round. That's it right. Was, it was just the knob. So the, the pot plastic, was fine. The pot was fine. The plastic knob was loose on the pot because the splines, ah. the shaft is a split. It's a split shaft with right. splines on it, and it had just been crushed in. Right. And so all it needed was expanded, which you do very, very carefully with a, a flat head screwdriver. Right. Push it down there. Because otherwise they can snap off. They can. If you if you if you if you if you're too fierce with it, it'll snap right off. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I just expanded it out and pushed the knob back on again. Perfect, perfect. Uh, right, Michael Reese says, I've been doing fret work for 20 years. It took that long to get good at it. It's work that shouldn't be rushed, and few people realise how much work goes into it. I'm buoyed that my process is almost identical to Johnny's, and I live a world away in Sydney. Good on you, Johnny. Fantastic video. Um, yes, so, so another fan. Yeah, well, it, 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 took, it took me 100 fretting jobs, I think, to get... All where you are yeah to, just to get you know, iron out all the little errors that can crop up right you know people think you can just you know do it but you, I mean some people can do it and, and get lucky but there are so many little whys and wherefores mm. pitfalls that occur that you know I reckon after I'd done a hundred I thought I was I'd got I'd seen most odd things right right which did take a number of years sure you know. sure uh, Andrew T.G. Green, and a number of people have said this again, this guy has a fantastic voice. Get him into voice acting. That was brilliant. Um, <laughs> well, I can't believe that. Well, no. Yeah. Uh, so, well, <laughs> and loads of people had said that they, they think Johnny should be doing ASMR videos. Right, Do you know I, what they are? No, I haven't. Right. <laughs> so, ASMR videos, they're called Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. It's an experience characterised by a static-like or tingling sensation on the skin that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. So what people do, there will be like a picture of someone, video of someone brushing their hair. Right? Okay. And lots of people with insomnia and things use these videos to go to sleep because it soothes them and relaxes ah, them. I, I put them all to sleep. No, well, no, they're saying what you're doing is so relaxing. Oh, I see. And, and, and 
so lots of people have said they started to watch this video, they thought oh, they'd give it a few minutes, and so many people ended up watching the whole hour and how right, many minutes right. because they found it so relaxing and your voice so soothing. They're saying, <laughs> this is sort of an ASMR video of sorts, that, that you should really do that sort of thing. Oh, so what I'm going to do is that if all else fails and uh, TPS goes nowhere, I'm going to start making ASMR videos with Johnny, and uh, you know that, that's how we'll make our small mark on the world okay right yeah um okay uh now so this is in interesting uh johnny satchton uh had a few questions first one was how much would this cost the average customer so how much do you charge for a refret well a lot i've had a lot of email inquiries about how much does it cost to do this right and in in the job that i did on mixed guitar mm -hmm. uh which was the the, the full refret a new bone nut, um, skimmed the surface of the board a little mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. uh, it was £300. Right, and how much did you charge us to do that? £300. Absolutely worth every penny. And to be honest, we were uh, just so grateful that he allowed us to come in and film the process. So, you know, it was... and it was Because I find that fascinating. As long as I've been playing guitar, there are, you know, that whole process is a, you know, was a mystery. Right, you know, and how right. you get that, you know, which is why, again, today we're going to be looking at, you know, the setup of guitar yeah, and how you yeah. make it feel certain ways and trust rods and, you know, but many questions. Anyway, um, then Joe says, how much of what Johnny does can I expect my local hopefully qualified and con uh, conscientious luthier to actually do? And moreover, how does someone even try and locate someone like Mr. Kincaid locally? Well, I don't know. It's tricky, honest, isn't it? That, um... I guess you've just got to go... People come here because they're recommended. Right. And the whole thing is a word-of-mouth process, mm -hmm. which takes a long time. People are... People... Y younger guitar builders come in here all the time saying, how do I actually make a, a job out of it? Right. And I go, well, you've just got to keep doing it mm -hmm. for 20-odd years before you actually create enough of a reputation that you've got work to do. Right. And in the meantime, up to that, you've just got to kind of find a part-time job, I guess, unless you've got a private income. Right. And just just sort of work at what you're working at, and gradually people will get to know you by word of mouth. Mm. I don't think advertising is, does you an awful lot of good. It might... People will see your name, but they won't know whether you're any good or not. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose in the old days, word of mouth was two people talking to each other. Nowadays, I gather people say, oh, I, I'm new to Bristol. I, um, I Facebooked all the musicians I knew as to who do you, who, who's the best person to go to. And then they take their answer for that, for right. that, and go, oh, you got more votes than anybody else. <laughs> so I'm, I'm coming, coming to you. So it must be, it must be a sort of a social media thing. Right. These days that, that people would do the word of mouth. And how much social media do you do? do you I mean? do none. <laughs> I don't know what social media is really. Uh, well, you know, a, there's, a, there's an argument to say that your life is probably all the better for it. Um, okay. I'm sure it is. I know it is. <laughs> uh, so Gary Mosley, uh, Arne Hoy, Rage, and again, another, a bunch of other people. Why does Johnny use solder on the top of the frets? I get why he's heating the frets to remove any glue and to get the fret head to expand. I'm not sure if that's it, but why does it require solder? Surely the iron on its own will heat the fret sufficiently. All it does, a friend of mine asked me that as well, um, it conducts the heat more rapidly. More rapidly? Yes. Wow. Okay. Because if you've got the soldering iron, you've got the tip of the soldering iron that's... Mm -hmm kind of slightly rounded maybe, the one that I've got at the moment is anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have a flat tip one, but that one blew up. So this is a, well, on that there's just a sort of a, there's, there's a point of contact like... This is very, like, very yeah, small. like a round point of contact yeah, from the, the top soldering iron onto fret. a round top fret. So if you, if, you, if you just give it a little bit of solder, it heats you, you've, got, you've got a, you know, a hundred times the surface area for the heat to transfer through. That's so so it's, just, it's just speed. So clever. Uh, Trico, David Case, Bob Smith, Alal3823, and Joe Fordish, and again, a bunch of others. I didn't get to get down all, the, all of those uh, names, but they ask, why not use stainless steel frets if you're going to replace frets? Um, well, 
I'm not an expert on stainless steel frets. Mm -hmm. um, Have you done them before? I've done. I've got one customer that wears a lot of frets out on his acoustic guitar mm -hmm. in specific areas because he's a Celtic player and he uses a capo. And we, because he wears three frets away so often, we've started replacing the three frets with stainless steel. Just those three. Just those three. Wow. The rest of them are all right. But I would imagine. I suppose I've talked to a few players who've had stainless steel refrets, electric players, and mm. they've said they haven't liked the sound that it makes. So yeah. I've gone, oh, that's interesting. And it's hard enough fretting with regular fret yeah, wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stainless steel is much, much harder, much, much stiffer. stiffer. Mm. It'll ruin your tools far quicker, and it's just going to make the job, you know three times harder than it is at the moment and especially with the big size fret wire mm. it's very it's more difficult than the smaller size fret wire the harder fret wires it's a much harder job than if you you did it with the soft fret wires which mm. i never ever use right I mean, if it's soft fret wire it's almost the consistency of a piece of solder and so you can kind of bash it anywhere and it'll stay in right and of course you've you know you've you frets are gone in 18 months sure. and it, it used to be very common on a lot of imported guitars this very soft fret wire fortunately now they've stopped doing that I right. think what, what are the, what's the current fret wire made out of it well it's, it's I, I don't actually know what its chemical formula is right. it's referred to as nickel uh, hard gauge you know right. fret wire there must be and there's a percentage that says it of 18% nickel in it mm. and so what the rest of it is, I have absolutely no idea. There must be some copper or steel in there, right. um, or copper or brass, because it will go verdigris corrosion on it after a while. Right, yes, of course. So um, there must be some copper. It goes a bit green and Yeah, it goes gross. green. Yeah, yeah, right. It goes green, and when you pull old frets out mm. of guitars that are 60 years old, mm. it's all green underneath. There are a lot of people commented that they really like their stainless steel frets, which is great. I personally, and I know Mick, you know, that have played some stainless steel frets, and there's a, there's definitely a brittleness right. to it, and it does. If you think of that, the the difference tone the, tonally with uh, red when we went from sixty one hundreds to sixty one oh fives, yeah, and that's just a a, a, a less a, a narrower fret, yes, and the difference tonally is massive, yeah, right. So then, if you're going to place the whole fret with stainless steel, that has to have a big impact. It on will the have it'll, it'll have a different. Yes, it'll make it sound, I suppose, much more brittle and metallic. I suppose, right. And just having worked with stainless steel over the years on various bits on guitars, I think I used to use truss rods out of stainless steel at one stage, and I was amazed how brittle it was and easy to snap it. Wow! But it's just so much harder than, say, mild steel. Mm -hmm. That uh, it would, it would, you know, you'd get through your tools very, very quickly. Yeah, right. And therefore, the price would have to go rocketing up. Sure. For a refret, I suppose, because you're saying, "Well, I'm buying a new set of tools every month." Yeah, right. So, um, some people were asking about using water on the fingerboard. Okay. So, what was the idea behind the water? Oh, the water is the water's. I suppose traditionally, water in the slot was there to lubricate the tang going into the slot. When you say traditionally, so this is not a new idea? No, I, th I think, well, this is things I might have read in a book somewhere at sure. one stage. So the old Spaniard pe Spanish people would have put a little bit of water down the slot and pushed the, f the fret wire in. Right. No glue whatsoever. Wow, right. OK, just sat there. And it's only, I suppose, that I noticed... Well, I thought about using glue, then refretting old Gibsons. I went, well, OK, there's animal glue down these slots. Mm. That's a great idea. You know, we want some insurance against a little bit of movement in the wood mm -hmm. to hold the thing in. And if you use it, it's, so all I'm doing it is with it, making it a dilute kind of glue. Right. So the water goes in there, it maybe softens up the wood a little bit and helps mm -hmm. the tang go in, and then a piece of glue afterwards makes a slightly less dense mix right. of glue and um, it helps the glue go into the wood as well when you moisten it up okay so, um, so it's 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 just there to help me and then uh, because it's a water-soluble glue 
I'm wiping the excess off with a wet rag anyway, so it all kind of goes together. Right. And I prefer using the water-based glues. Mm -hmm. I use tight bond. <clears throat> I've just done a refret on a guitar bound board, and the previous person who'd refretted it had used super glue. And it's a hell of a job to get gone off super glue out of a slot in a yeah, bound right. board. You're right. picking and picking away like mad trying to pick the stuff away. And if you use a, a water-based glue, like on all the old Gibsons, if you've got the fingerboard slots full of water, mm -hmm. soon that glue, after 20 minutes, it's all softened and it'll come out very much easier. Right. So it just makes the job easier for the next person. Super glue is probably the fast way of doing it. Right. Um, but it gives you trouble later on. When later you on, yeah, okay. especially with a bound board. And and how do you know that when you... So the water goes in, the glue goes in, which basically the water dilates, dilutes that glue. How do you know that things are dry now, the water's all evaporated? And, oh, and we just leave it a couple of days. Just takes a couple of days and it's yeah, done? Yeah, 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 I think so. Two days, all that will be gone. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the glue dries quite, quite quickly. Right. Um... And also, it makes a better bond of the um, the glue in there, as well as insurance. It's making a better fit. It might be filling up a little bit of the space in between the fret and the, the slot. Yeah. And therefore, it'll improve the tone, because you're getting improved transmission in vibrations. Awesome. So that's, that's really... So it's really tonal and insurance for it to pop back out. Sure. And so many instruments that come from... The Far East, certain countries, the frets are, you know, I do setups and you, as soon as you put the fret stone across it, you can hear them shrieking because they're all they're loose. vibrating in the yeah, slots. Yeah, they're vibrating wow. in the slots. So you have to, oh, and you can see them, you push them up and down at the ends and you can see them bouncing. And the first thing you have to do is to, sure they sit is to, down. Is to sit down. Yeah, and the only yeah. way, because most of them are all re relatively cheap instruments, you just have to weep, whip. Sorry, wick a bit of super glue straight in those slot. cracks. Straight, Get, yeah, and it'll and then hold the fret down, and then when they're all glued back solid, then you can start doing your fret dressing right. and setting up with the guitar. But um, excellent. Okay, well, last question. There, uh, people were asking about the way that you uh, were taking a bit of excess off at the upper end. Yeah, oh yes, the, the, where the, what I refer to as the kick-up. The kick-up, up yes. So can we talk about the kick-up? Yeah. What exactly that is. Well, Should, would it help if I grab the guitar to demonstrate? I guess so, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay, what have we got here? So this is the guitar we're going to be working on today. This is my Ed O'Brien Strat. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be setting this up. So we're talking about kick-up. How okay. does that work? Well, kick-up... Um, is best explained as this part of the fretboard mm -hmm. not being in line with this part of the fretboard. Right. As in, so if this is a straight line along here, in mm -hmm. greatly exaggerated terms, my hand is what is happening on quite a lot of guitars mm -hmm. up that end. So it's a bit like a, a ski jump. And it's not actually this coming up, it's this end coming well, it, up, right, and this it, is being yeah, flat. That's, that's staying put, right. and this lot is kind of pulling a little bit. Right. And because this part of the neck is bulkier than this part of the neck, yep. that's where this that... is where it kind of folds. That's how I understand it. Right. That. So you'll notice it on an awful lot of fender bases, because the stress is that much greater. Mm. You notice it on... You know, most instruments that, mm -hmm. that they've settled a little bit over the years, mm. and this bit is effectively sticking in the way, so which is why everybody's going, Oh, my guitar plays great here, and as I come up the neck and start bending, I'm getting all me choking out here because this bit's sticking up in the way. And a truss rod doesn't necessarily solve that problem, right? It might, it might, but the truss rod tends to act more on this section of the neck. Okay. Because that's the the neck that part of the neck is there's less timber in it, so it tends to move that bit. Mm. Some sometimes it will it'll even itself out a good bit by a truss rod adjustment. Right. And a and a good grinding of the frets out of the way. Right. Um, each guitar is individual, but you know most older instruments you, you there's the definite when you've taken the frets out, you get a definite. 
kick up at the end here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same on acoustic guitars, you know, the whole thing folds where the body joins the neck and that's kicking up in the air. Right. Um, every, you know, glued in neck guitar, it's sitting there poking up in the air. Because that's got up. nowhere to go, that's sort of, and because yes, that's bolted in, yeah. and then this is, yeah, I say. So it's basically folds here, right. very, very slightly. Right. Which is why you get so many choking problems up there. So to make, the idea is, by getting rid of a bit more here, and when people, it's, it's that one guy said that Johnny was planing wood off, actually wasn't, a, it's not a huge amount of wood, is it? It's just, it's no. just. but it can be sometimes. Really? Yeah, 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 sometimes you go, well, let's get rid of it. When you're doing a refret and you and you remove a millimetre of wood off there to make it straight. Right. Sometimes that's what it takes. To yeah, get, you might yeah, take, yeah, you yeah, might yeah, take yeah. a millimetre off there, a millimetre and a half, which obviously on a fender with a veneered style fretboard that's impossible but sure. you might take a smidgen off yeah, yeah, yeah. which is less than a millimeter and the, and and the idea of that though is to make sure that everything is in line from here right through yeah to the end. yeah because what what yeah i suppose what you're wanting is not a dead straight neck mm -hmm. but a very subtle bit of relief in it but you want that to be even sure you don't want it to be suddenly with a jump up this end mm -hmm. But the neck needs to have some, what's this slight bend, which we all call relief. And that is to do with the envelope of the vibrating string. So if okay. you, look at, you look at that string, it's fixed here and it's fixed there. Right. And it's, 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 it's vibrating within a space, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's what I call the envelope of the vibrating string. Right. And that envelope of that string is a very subtly curved line from end to end and the relief ought to in some ways mimic that okay and that depends on what action you have and kind of how you want to play the guitar okay that's amazing uh so uh we're going to end this here and then we're going to uh, go straight into looking at how we set this guitar up uh but again on behalf of everyone that's watched this that you know it's such a wealth of knowledge and we're so grateful that you took the time out to you know and well that you enable us to in here and to see how this all works so you know we're, it was amazing thank well, you so it's, much uh, it's good to share it with you because it's um you build up a what well, i sort of think it's a, a bank of knowledge over the years mm -hmm. and it's kind of you don't really want it to die with you <laughs> <laughs> kind of, if I can, yeah. if I can tell someone else about it, you know. Johnny has graciously agreed that uh, he, he's happy to be an occasional contributor to the show. So, you know, when we have these questions about the instruments, you know, Johnny's our guy. Um, so you can, you can expect to see more of him. You know, until we start our ASMR channel together. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Check out the setup video that's going to be happening right after this. Right. Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye.